Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Specialist Performance Tester Certification. We are in chapter three and we are done with all the necessary tutorials to be discussed as a part of this particular series. And now we are talking about the next tutorial, which is the sample questions from this chapter. Now this chapter, again, we will be talking about the exam pattern and picking up certain questions from the list to understand that what kind of questions you can actually expect at different K levels from this chapter. To begin with, the very first thing is the examination question patterns and the distribution of the same. Uh, the number one thing is to talk about the number of questions that we will be having seven questions coming in from here. And the distribution says that you will be having five questions at K2 level, which just requires you to understand. But other two questions will be from K4 level. That means it's all about analyzing and definitely you will be given with the real time scenarios and you need to analyze the scenario before you can actually pick up the right answer. So make sure that you are creative on these points. That is 3.3, 3.4, that how the system environments are created, how the risks are associated with the architectures, what kind of activities are performed at different development models. So the elaboration is equally important the way I have explained to you, and you will be expecting the questions coming in the similar manner. So let's get started and pick up the very first question of our tutorial today. The very first question coming in it from K2 level, when applying the principal performance testing activities, when should the test case be ordered into performance test procedure? Now these are very straightforward, though they stand at K2 level, but they are pretty straightforward to understand that how exactly this should be solved. And being aware of the concept at exactly the point where you need to answer them should be absolutely fine. So just being aware of that what exactly is the place or the process of the fundamental test process where you generally align your test procedures of performance of course it goes with the test procedure phase of our generic test process as well so when it comes to that the phase which we are talking about is test implementation so test implementation is the phase where you will be targeting the test procedures and converting them into the appropriate way of executing them in test suites and so on so Straightforward, of course, it's not test planning, it's not the test analysis and design, it's not test closure, it's all about test implementation. So the right answer is C, the test implementation phase where generally we uh, align or order our test procedures, thus the performance test procedure will also be aligned in the same phase. Moving into the next question here, question number two, consider the following technical environments. And here we are talking about the various environments which we have already covered in our tutorials. We have got one as virtualized, two dynamic or cloud-based, three client or server and browser-based, four mobile, five embedded, and six mainframe. Which of these is most likely to have a performance risk due to memory leak? Now, at this point of time, team, before you look at the options, you start analyzing first that which is that concept talking about memory leak what exactly is memory leak and how does it impact any particular environment and then start relating back to your understanding from the tutorials that how exactly memory leak can be important in various uh, environment so if you remember in our tutorial when we were talking about this we did discuss that where all memory leaks can be a part of it so this could be very straightforward to a lot of us if you really remember the content which we discussed, if in case you forgot, then it would be a trouble. So we just wanna make sure that you remember certain things from the concept and make your answer more straightforward. So let's look at the options here. And options are about talking into one, two, three, four, and so on. So let's start evaluating from the top, virtualized. Of course, virtualized is one of the option where it is uh, uses it uses a shared resource across different applications thus including memory and uh, definitely memory the moment it comes into picture we have to con consider the memory leaks involved with that coming to the next one is the dynamic and cloud-based dynamic and cloud-based uh, environments are designed to dynamically scale so i think that should be uh, very much feasible and memory leak should not be a concern there as it can dynamically increase the 
resources required to uh, give the better experience to the user. So that should not be something we should be considering from the point of memory leak. And uh, they are less of the risk because of the environment will scale the components required at any point of time. So this is not uh, relevant to us. When it talked about the number three client server and browser based, again, when it comes to client server and browser based environments, they are prone to memory leaks, particularly since a lot of these code is generally written in C or C++. So, and uh, we generally have a concept of the memory considerations and hard coded. So of course, uh, the memory leak will be one of the criteria and considerations here to be taken into account. Anyways, just being sure about one and three, you can figure out the right answer and cross check the other two options. But still, let's go with the other things to talk about. Number four is mobile. And I think we remember that in mobile environments, these are prone to leakage and are particularly at risk due to the limited available memory as per the hardware defined for a particular mobile set. And that's where memory leak is a very important risk to be considered when talking about mobile environments which are created in order to perform the performance test. Coming to the next is embedded systems or embedded environments. Embedded environments are, are again, the same is actually true to be considered as the right answer. And uh, the Im embedded environments, uh, which basically talk about uh, the integration between a software and hardware configuration. And these also tend to be written in the languages that have less protection against the leaks. So generically certain language are used, which does not really fulfill the need of uh, dynamically aligning the memory and virtually allocating some buffer to accommodate memory leaks. So this could also be a part of it and uh, can be considered for the risk of uh, memory leak. Coming to the last one, six mainframe, which uh, again is not an option. The reason is mainframe tends to run older code, often written in the higher level languages that provide their own memory management and uh, does not really go for any kind of memory leak issues and cannot be considered as one of the options to be uh, considering about the memory leaks as an issue or risk in these environments. So the right answer here is D1345, which means virtualized environments, client server and browser based environments, mobile environments and embedded environments are the right answers for the same. Moving into the next question, here we are talking about one of the K4 level examples so that you get an idea that how we can expect the questions on the K4 level. So here is the question number three. You are working on a project that tracks health history information for patients across a region. The number of records handled by the system is in the millions due to the large number of patients in the region. Patient information must be accessible to doctors in offices, hospitals, and urgent care facilities so that we can keep a track of all the patients at any point of time. This information should be presented to the requester within three seconds of request. That's your very first criteria which is coming in from the performance. That is the response time. And they have defined it that it should be less than or equal to three seconds particularly for the patients with critical allergies and preconditions. So they have also defined you a condition here that for which uh, patients are on priority to return the response time less than equal to three seconds. But of course, they're generally ex uh, expecting this response time for all other pa uh, patients in the hospital. Plus, of course, critically for these patients which are having some critical uh, allergies and preconditions defined. Given this information, when is the best time in the project to analyze and assess the performance risk? I think, first of all, uh, a person need to understand the scenario precisely that we are talking about a hospital. We are also having a criticality being defined that how it should be addressed. We are also having uh, the scenario that what exactly we are looking into and we have some parameters being set that okay, what should be the right answer in terms of like response time, do we have a threshold? And we have also categorized certain patients which should be meeting our expectations uh, in order to give that performance outcome. So let's start understanding these options one after the other and see which could be the right option. A, during the requirement phase, and again, just prior to executing the performance test, I think that's quite early 
and that should be helpful to us, but uh, is not correct because it ignores looking at the risk during the development. And if you talk about performance, a lot of things can be measured at the architecture level. A lot of things can be measured right at the development level. And we can very well closely work and understand that how a critical patient will be identified, what kind of control flow should be defined for that, and many other things related to that right at the early phases, but just not requirement gathering and then before doing the performance test. So this is a slight irrelevant option to be picked up as the right answer. Let's look at B, after designing, but prior to coding. So after design and prior to coding, I don't think we really have some time there to do anything. So B is again incorrect because it leaves out the requirement and development and that at the completion of the development, all three together. So requirement is equally important, but just not requirement. Design is important, but just not design. Development is important, just not design or development. So, you know, we are talking about something which is more relevant where we address everything as we have criticality and we are talking about patients. If the records are not updated quickly and responded immediately, we may be late to save somebody's life. C, during system testing and again prior to the performance test, why C should not be correct? Let's look at it uh, because it is... It leaves out the requirement and development phase as discussed earlier. So I think right from the justification of our previous options, we must be able to filter out a lot many other options and come to the conclusion that we have one more option to talk about which is going to fulfill all the needs. So let's look at D, repeatedly throughout the requirement, development and performance testing, which really says that right from the requirement, you will make sure that you have precise information with you. At the development, you will make sure that everything meets the expectations and people are working on it. Since performance is critical here, the risk must be analyzed as early as possible and then repeatedly as the system is assembled, since risk may change both in impact and likelihood at any point of time. So keeping a track on that would be really important at this point of time and making sure that everything works at, you know, is created by considering all those factors and definitely at the end, you will do test them at the part of the performance testing. So the right answer here is D, repeatedly throughout the requirements, development and performance testing to just to make sure that everything is intact. If there are priorities changing, there are impact changing, likelihood changing, then we will accordingly look into those issues. Well, that's all from this particular tutorial team. I hope you have a good idea on the sample questions from this chapter. We'll be getting started with our chapter four in next tutorial. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.